What's up, fam? Welcome to the Godly Wisdom Podcast. I am your host, Clifford Che, and I just want to say thank you all so much for tuning in today's episode, whether you're listening on Apple Podcasts, whether you're on Spotify, whether you're on all kinds of podcasting platforms, or even if you're watching the video podcast on YouTube, I want to say thank you so much for tuning in. Um, Since we're in the aisle of thank you, I want to thank you guys so much for the love and the support you guys have showed on the first episode of season one, which was really the 12th episode of the Godly Wisdom Podcast. I can't believe that so far we have 12 episodes. And this one that we're filming right now, this one that you're listening to right now, It's the 13th episode, but I want to thank all of you who showed the love and the support. Those of you who shared the clips on on TikTok, on Instagram, the notes that you guys shared with me, I love it. And so make sure that even with this one, you're you're taking notes. Make sure that you share them with me on Instagram, on TikTok, and all the pages that we have. Like we said in the last episode, season two, our emphasis, the theme for season two is godly relationships, you. Because normally when we hear relationships, we think about other people, but the emphasis on this season is on you, is on the you part of the relationships that you find yourself in. Why? Because I believe that you are the foundation of all relationships. The foundation for all your relationships is not somebody else. Is you. If you can get yourself together, you can thrive in all the relationships that you have in your life. So that is what season two is going to be about. Um, all the episodes that you get are going to be tailored towards the you part of relationships. And eventually you will be getting, you know, some episodes that will focus on other people in your other relationships. But I do believe that it's very good for us to start with the foundation first, which is you. So thank you all so much for the love, for the support that you guys showed that episode. I'm really hype about this one. I'm hype about today's episode, as you can see by the title, or if you're if you can't see it, I'm gonna let you know. Today, episode 13, we're going to be talking about the fact that you can't afford to be a seasonal Christian. You, again, the emphasis is on you. You can't afford to be a seasonal Christian. Y'all, being a seasonal Christian costs too much. It costs too much for you to just be a seasonal Christian. But before we do that, as the custom of this podcast, we want to read a proverb of the day. And today's proverbs of the day is from the book of Proverbs chapter 3 in the verse 1 in the verse chapter 3 verse 1 in the amplified version I'm going to read it. And it says that my son, my daughter, my son, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. I chose this proverb of the day because It is very crucial for you to keep the word of God in your heart. It is very crucial for you to meditate on it day and night. If you don't want to be a seasonal Christian, don't forget the teachings and the word of God. Consistently meditate on the word of God so that you can be consistent as a child of God. Because God did not save you for you to be seasonal. I'm going to say that again. Consistently meditate on the word of God because God did not save you for you to be seasonal in your walk with him. Being a seasonal Christian is not going to cut it when we look at the things God has called you to do. Being a seasonal Christian is not going to cut it. When we look at all the people that God has placed in your life for you to be a blessing to them, there's way too much destiny on your head for you to be a seasonal Christian. And I'm going ahead of myself, but this is so good to me. There's way too much destiny on your head for you to decide that I'm just going to be a seasonal Christian. I'm going to be a a, a seasonal Christian. I'm going to be a Christian when I feel like it. Some of y'all probably listening to me like Clifford, a seasonal Christian. Well, what does that mean? Where, where did I even come in? To be a seasonal Christian, the whole idea of being a seasonal Christian for me came from the fact that in America, those of you who are listening in other countries, I, I, let me break this down for you. In America, there are four seasons, right, in, in terms of the weather. So we have the winter, we have the summer, we have the fall, and we have the spring. 
Normally in the winter is very cold. Like I personally hate the winter. Like I love all of y'all who love the cold, but I do not like the winter. Why? Because it's too cold. I love summer. I don't like the spring. Why? Because I have severe allergies. I don't have severe allergies in the name of Jesus. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. But normally during allergy season, during the spring, I deal with allergies and my eyes be bugging, my nose be bugging, like I be coughing, you know, all these things. And, and, so, and so that is why I don't like the spring. Now, the fall is nice. I love the fall because, you know, it's so nice, like the trees and everything. Like, I, I just love the vibe of the fall. So there are four seasons here in America, right? And just because I don't like winter does not mean that I have the ability to say, I'm going to stay in a house and I'm not going to do anything. And I'm going to put my life on pause. Just because I don't like what comes with the season does not mean that I get to call off on living. I get to call off on becoming. The world will not pause for you for a season simply because you don't like it. And I want somebody listening to me, a believer listening to me to know this, that just because you don't like the season that you're in does not mean that you should stop being like Christ in this season. Being a Christian is not a seasonal walk. It's a daily walk. So you don't get to be loving based on seasons. Oh gosh. You don't get to say, oh yeah, yeah. When, when, when I'm in a season, when everything is good to me, then I'm going to be good to others. No, it doesn't work that way. In good times and in bad times, you must continue to stay in the image of Christ. You must continue to live, walk, talk like Christ. So again, like I said, being a seasonal Christian costs way too much. It's too costly for you to just be a seasonal Christian. And the reason being is because there's destiny on your head. Jesus Christ looked at Peter and he said, upon this rock, I will build my church. Peter's destiny was too great that he couldn't pick and choose when he would follow Christ. He had to follow Christ every day as he walked here on this earth. Why? Because he knew that he was set up to become the rock. The reason why it's so deadly for you to pick and choose when you're going to follow Christ and when you're going to be a Christian is because you have great destiny. You have a great assignment. Your purpose is too great for you to call off being a Christian when you feel like it. God has literally ordained you to bring many people into the knowledge of Christ. God has literally ordained you to bring restoration into the lives of people. And you cannot do that when you feel like calling off anytime you want to. Because the day you call off on being a Christian may be the very day that somebody was waiting on you to be blessed and know about Christ. But look at this, though. Even though Peter was called to be the rock, even though Peter was known to be the one that God had placed so much destiny on to make sure that the church and the body of Christ, you know, that whole movement moves forward. Peter was struggling with something. He was struggling with the eyes of the enemy. What I mean by that is that the enemy was looking for him. Another reason why you can't afford to be a seasonal Christian is because the enemy is looking for you. Watch this. Let's read a scripture for real quick. In the book of Luke chapter 22, in a verse 31 to 32, Jesus Christ was talking to the disciples and he turned to address Peter specifically. And he said to him in a verse 31, he says, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed, meaning certain, certainly, Meaning there, that, that word indeed means that it is certain. It says, indeed, Satan has asked for you. The reason why you can't pick and choose when to read the Bible, the reason why you can't pick and choose when, you, when, you gonna, when you're going to go to church, when you're going to fellowship with other believers, the reason why you can't pick and choose when you're going to fast, the reason why you can't pick and choose when you're going to live a life of intimacy with God is because Satan has asked for you. 
I know that's not what you wanted to hear, but this season we need to get you together. And, and if you don't get you together, Satan is looking for you. He says, Satan has asked for you. And not only did he ask for you, he, he has asked that he may sift you as wheat. So Satan is not only asking for you, he's asking to literally divide you, break you into pieces so much so that your roots would not be found. Satan does not only want you to work for him, he wants to destroy you into pieces. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy so Jesus is saying that he, he's not here only to steal you. He's not here only, only to kill you. He wants to destroy you. If you give in today, I know following God is hard. I know you're in a season where it's so hard today and you want to give in and you want to give up and you feel like you don't have any strength to keep walking this walk with Christ. But I'm here to tell you that if you give in today, not only are you going to be killed, not only are you going to be destroyed, but your foundations will be destroyed. Your, your root will be destroyed. The generations after you will be destroyed. Why? Because when you give up, there's no more hope. To somebody listening to me today, maybe this is all I came to do is to give you encouragement. Keep hope alive. Because the fact that you're going through something does not mean that God has abandoned you. The fact that the enemy is after you does not mean that God has abandoned you. He said the enemy has asked that he may sift you as wheat. Now, the verse 32 is where the hope is. Jesus says that even though he's looking for you, even though the enemy has his eyes on you, he says, but I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. Jesus said that I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. To somebody listening to me today, Jesus is currently at the right hand side of God the Father, making intercession on your behalf that you will not give up, that your faith will not fail. I know it seems like your faith is drowning in this season, but I came to encourage you that don't give up. Because Jesus is making intercession on your behalf that your faith will not fail. Listen, man, the enemy is after you. The enemy wants you to give in. The enemy wants you to, to, to just follow God at a convenience, um, at a convenience um, um, on your own, on your own ability, based on your flesh. But following God is not a convenient walk. In, in, other, in, other, in, another, in another place in scripture, he says that though we are hard pressed on every side, we are not destroyed. To somebody listening to me today, man, pain does not mean that God has abandoned you. Pain simply means that God is allowing you to go through a season so that you can fully become and, and become mature in who he has ordained for you to become. God does not create pain for you but he will use pain to develop you. Oh, gosh. I don't know why, but I just started this episode and I just feel like just being of encouragement to somebody. Jesus says that I've prayed for you, but that your faith, should not, your, your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. The other reason why you can't afford to be a seasonal Christian is because... Your brethren being strengthened is depending on you. Listen, don't follow Christ just for you. God did not create you just for your own benefit. They are, they are brethren. They are sistering. They are brothers and sisters around you that are waiting for you to be strengthened in your faith so that you can strengthen them. God is taking you through what you're going through so that you can be a blessing to those around you. Everything you're going through right now is not for you, but for those around you. So if you give up right now, if you do this Christianity thing halfway, you are literally going to put other people's life at risk. You are responsible and God will ask you for it. I know that's not what you want to hear, but before you focus on any other relationship out there, please get you together in a sense of don't let your faith fail. Oh, gosh. The other reason why you can't afford to be a seasonal Christian is because 
I know you're asking for God to bless you, but with every blessing comes a fight. The Apostle Paul will speak in 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 9, and he says, For a great and effective door has opened to me, and there are many adversaries, and there are many enemies. He didn't say but. He said and. In other words, every time God blesses you, it comes with adversaries. You ever heard the phrase, if you don't have haters, you're not popping? The reason why you have the enemy so much after you is because you're blessed. And it will be very, very childish, and I use childish loosely, here of you to receive a blessing from God, to claim all the all these blessings from God and not truly follow through with the walk. Because with every blessing comes with an adversary. And so if you know that the enemy is after you and is after your blessing, please, you can't afford to be seasonal. The day you disconnect from your source is the day you begin to die. Stay plugged in with God. Stay connected with God. Because I know you have been celebrating that blessing. I know you've been testifying. But right after that, the enemy is coming. He's looking for you because he knows you're blessed. He's looking for, listen, waking up every day is a blessing. That is enough. Your waking up is enough for the enemy to look for you. I know you're waiting. Oh, oh, you're probably saying, God, Clifford, where's the blessing? I mean, I'm waiting for that thing. And God still didn't answer. The fact that you woke up is a blessing. And that is enough for the enemy to seek after you. Oh, gosh. So the enemy is looking for you. I want to give you another scripture on why you can't afford to be a seasonal Christian. You can't afford to be a seasonal Christian because the enemy does not call off. The enemy is always working. We're the only people who want to call off when our opponent is constantly working against us. Dear Christians, let's stay in the faith. Be consistent. You watch this. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 8 to 11 in the Amplified. It says, be sober. And it put into parentheses, it says, be sober, meaning be well-balanced and self-disciplined. This is my solution to you. And this is how I'm ending this. Dad, you have to be well-balanced. The Bible said a a forced balance is an abomination unto the Lord. You have to have self-discipline. That is what it means to be sober. If you want to overcome the enemy, you have to be self-disciplined. You're not going to feel like it, but you have to be self-disciplined. That means don't wait for somebody to tell you to read your word to read it. That means don't wait for somebody to tell you to worship God for you to worship God. That means don't wait for somebody to tell you to seek the Lord intimately for you to seek the Lord intimately. Have self-discipline. And it says, be alert and cautious at all times. You can't afford to be a seasonal Christian. Why? Because the enemy's looking for you. Be alert and cautious at all times. Some of y'all are trying to live a soft life, and that is not Christ-like. It's not biblical. The soft life you're trying to live is not biblical. I know you did not want to hear that. But living a soft life is not biblical. God has has called you to wrestle. This walk of faith is a walk of fight. And I know we live in a day and age where social media want to paint a picture of Christianity to us that that is a soft life. But following Christ is not for the weak. Following Christ is not a soft life. Following Christ comes with temptation. Following Christ comes with a fight. The enemy is looking for you. But Jesus said, I have prayed for you that your faith will not fail. The enemy, your adversary, walks around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. That is not a soft life. So be alert and cautious at all times. It says the enemy of yours, the devil prowls around like a roaring lion, fiercely hungry. The enemy is hungry. But we're full. So, you know, when you get full, you go lay down, you rest, you chill. And Christians are walking around like they're full when there's work to be done, when there's food to eat, when there's the word to take in. Listen, stop acting like you are full. You still need more of the word. The enemy is walking around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. I want to chip this in here 
for someone who is full of fear because of the enemy. The Bible says that he's not a rowan lion. Pause when you're reading the scriptures. He walks around like a rowan lion, meaning he's not. He just bluffs. But he is looking for you, so stay alert. He said he's walking around like a rowan lion, fiercely hungry, seeking someone to devour. Now, my question to you is this. Does the someone that the enemy is going to get, does that someone has, does that have to be you? The person that the enemy is going to get to be distracted, does it have to be you? It doesn't have to be you. My pastor literally challenged my thinking. When we were talking and studying at church, he was teaching um, during the Easter period. And there was a question that came up on if God knew that, you know, um, Judas will betray him. Why will he allow Judas to be his disciple? And the answer he gave was this, that Jesus Christ was going to die anyway. But did it have to be Judas? And it literally challenged me so much that I was so quiet. And I was like, wow. Jesus had to die. But did that death have to come through Judas? Some things in life have to happen, but does it have to happen through you? Try as much as it depends on you to live peaceful with all of the believers around you. Try your best to live in the ways of God. But in the verse 9, it says that, but resist him. Be firm in your faith. Please resist the enemy. Be firm in your faith against his attack. Rooted, established, immovable. To somebody listening to me today, you have to be rooted in God. You have to be established in God so that you can be immovable. Every time you're easily moved, it is a sign that you're not deeply rooted and you're not established in the things of God. Knowing that the same experiences of suffering are being experienced by your brothers and sisters, the same experiences of suffering, the same things you're going through. The Bible tells us that your that your brothers and sisters in the world are going through the same thing. It says that experienced by your brothers and sisters through the world, you do not suffer alone. So another reason why you can be a seasonal Christian and use the card of, oh my God, you don't understand what I'm going through is because, listen, we understand. You're not the only one going through it. There are other people going through it and they're still standing. Look at that to encourage you that if they are going through it, if they went through it and they came out, I will go through it and I will come out. I will not sit here and be a seasonal Christian and wait for the good times for me to be a Christian again. Everybody can be a Christian in good times. But can you be called a Christian in bad times? And then the verse 10 says, after you have suffered for a while, a little while, the God of all grace. Oh, I love that one. The God of all grace who imparts his blessing and favor, who called you to his own eternal glory in Christ, will himself complete, confirm, strengthen, and establish you, making you what you ought to be. And this is what I want to leave you with. He's the God of all grace. And today I pray that the God of all grace give you the grace, meaning that grace is, is in so many dimensions. God can give you the grace in any area of weakness right now so that you can continue to be consistent in your faith and your walk as a Christian. You don't have to be a, a, a seasonal Christian. Why? Because there's grace for you. You don't have to be a seasonal Christian. You don't have to choose to be a seasonal Christian because God is giving you grace to walk the walk of faith. Receive that grace today so that you can be complete, so that you can be confirmed, so that you can be strengthened, so that you can be established in, in becoming who God has made you to be. And then verse 10, 11 says, to him be dominion, power, authority, sovereignty forever and ever. That is all I have for you today. That God is willing to help you if you don't give up. Listen, your walk with God is not only about right now. Your life is not just about what you see right now. There's destiny ahead. And for that, you can't afford to be a seasonal Christian. Keep on keeping on. Try again. If you fall down seven times, get up eight. A saint is not somebody who has never sinned before. A saint is simply somebody who has fell seven times but refused to stay down. Get back up. And don't allow the enemy to cause you to be a seasonal Christian. Don't even allow the things that this generation is saying 
to get you to be at the point where you only serve God at a convenience. You can do it. And God is willing to help you. I'm here making this podcast so that you can know, so that you can be encouraged to walk this walk of faith. But whatever you do, be alert, be sober, stay in the faith, and keep on keeping on. I love you. Just bring me to today's episode. Um, I pray that you have been blessed by this. And um, remember that this is our year of exploits. Ooh, exploits. And lastly, don't forget to be blessed, be yourself, and be happy. Peace.